one thing I hope has become clear to you, at least in your reading of my teachings, is that um, pain is not optional. Pain in life is not optional. It is inescapable. It is woven into the very fabric of life itself. And if you are going to experience the full breadth of what it is to be alive, then pain is very much part of that. Now, what we're concerned with in this teaching, particularly, is what it is that converts the pain of life into suffering. And suffering can be eliminated. Suffering can be reduced. And the understanding that this teaching points to inevitably, inevitably brings with it a reduction in suffering. But with that reduction in suffering may come an intensification of pain. Because the pain is raw. The pain, when it is not mitigated by the uh, second, what we'll call secondary involvement, meaning the thoughts, the secondary meaning the thoughts. Well, uh, there are certain kinds of thoughts. What the secondary involvement is not simply mentation. Mentation is not the problem. Thoughts are not the problem. There are certain thoughts, a certain kind of thought that we're pointing to, which I call this false sense of authorship, the sense that I am separate and independent and powerful, that I am responsible for things, that I am isolated as me. This sense expresses as thoughts certain kinds of thoughts, but it is not itself thought-based. It is a, a full sense that one develops at around the age of two years old. The sense I am independent, I am separate, I am responsible, I am powerful. Is this sense of personal and independent power that we're looking at in this teaching, because it is in fact out of this that the suffering arises. It is this that converts the pain of life. And to have a loved one be, be sick or to die is painful. There's, there's no getting around that other than to engage in some kind of what, what is basically a life negating philosophy that it's all positive, it's all good, it's all beautiful, that there is no, you know, and the pain is an illusion, and that any difficulty you have is simply a, a mistake of some kind. That you can kind of play with that for a while, but it always catches up. It always comes, you always come back to, I mean, life will, it will assert itself. Right. But I thought it's all about acceptance of everything. Acceptance of what is. But this is what's so tricky is the acceptance of what is includes your involvement sometimes. It is truly the acceptance of everything. And so the suffering that arises from the involvement is also, quote, accepted as part of what is in that moment. So there's no, there's nothing outside of this acceptance. 
that we're, we're pointing to, right? That all that happens is included in this acceptance of what is. So if you can look at what it is in your own experience, and difficult, painful experiences are often the most dramatically uh, powerful entry points into a really much deeper understanding. Because you were you are in some ways this the, the pain breaks down has broken down your various defenses against pain. If you're experiencing, if it's if it's hard, it's difficult, then it has already broken through your defenses. As such, it is much rawer and closer to, quote, the truth, the actuality of what is in the moment. And so, as, as such, it affords you an opportunity to see what's going on here. What is it about this pain that may have converted into suffering? What is it about this pain which is, is gut-wrenching? And you may find that there is a quality to the pain of it should not be. This is wrong. This, it, it, it shouldn't be this way. It's unfair. It's not right. And it is in that sense that the suffering emerges. And so you can, if you can identify that there is this quality of, this shouldn't be. This, it's not right. This should not be happening. This is a denial of what is. It's not a lot of that because of this of reading and understanding what there's not a lot of that. There, mm -hmm. is, there is that acceptance that of what there is there. Then then that is very much a blessing. And I I'm not saying that necessarily what your experience is is suffering. Only you can identify whether there is that component in the pain. Uh, a fundamental resistance to what is, which is distinguished from not liking it. So not liking something is a, a very normal reaction. We have likes and dislikes. We have preferences about all kinds of things. And that's not where the suffering arises from. It is a subtler sense that of uh, this unrightness of things, that it should not be, that that there what is is, is in some way a perversion of existence. It is in that sense that the suffering comes. So only you can determine from your own experience what is, what is the case. A lot of what's going on is wishing the relationship was better over all these years mm -hmm. than it was. And now it's more of a closeness. And, mm -hmm. and, I, and why couldn't it be that way for many years? You know, there was a lot of headbutting going on with us for a long time. Mm -hmm. Okay. So when you get into the realm of why, of course, it's, it's limitless. It's endless. You know, it's a, a billion explanations. But, and now, we, again, we get into this subtle difference between regret Gee, I, you know, I wish it had been different. I wish it had been better. You know, we've been closer to the... that. In itself, doesn't 
twist your guts. But twist your guts is a sense that somehow it should have been better. We should have tried harder. I should have made more of an effort to be, you know, to mend the fences, be more open, be kinder, more generous, whatever the story is. But it's, that's what twists the guts. That's what the suffering is. The sense that I should have and could have done anything differently. I understand. And again, I think those feelings might have been much stronger if I didn't do these readings and, and have somewhat of an understanding of, of the class. I, I don't doubt that, yeah. that if the, the teaching has uh, infected you, so to speak, and taken hold in you, mm -hmm. then its very presence will mitigate some of that suffering. It will, the suffering will be, it will come in and cut off that I shouldn't have and it could have been different if, if, if only, you know, all those sorts of uh, thought processes, which when they arise, the teaching can cut them off. You go, we couldn't have done any differently because we were the people we were in those moments and what it had to happen that way as part of the functioning of the entire universe because none of it's independent so with that understanding of the teaching it gets cut off and it doesn't blow up into full-blown suffering because that's full-blown suffering when you feel i could have and should have done it differently or he should have done it different. <laughs> this is suffering too. Mm -hmm. Because, I mean, that's a, a subtle form of hatred. That he could have. He could have done it different. And he, quote, implicit in that, he chose to do it this way. And hurt me and ruin our relationship. Blah, 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 blah. That's suffering. The suffering is my mother could have done it differently. That's the suffering. <laughs> Truly. <laughs> yes. Whoever gets filled in the blank. <laughs> you know I mean? <laughs> Who could have and should have done it differently. So that's when that suffering doesn't, I mean, that when that understanding is present, the suffering doesn't arise. Now, you may still have likes and dislikes. You may like what the you know, behavior of some people or, or dislike what they did historically or didn't do. I mean, this is, that comes with the territory of being human and being alive and having uh, a personality, having a character, having a nature. You know, we, we like certain things and dislike other things. And we like what some, what some people do and dislike what other people do. But that liking and disliking doesn't carry the root of suffer the seed of suffering with it. Unless there is the additional sense that they they had the power. They could have done it differently. And that they should have done it differently. And that's where that whole thing changes from disliking to really the, the root of, of your own, own personal suffering. Because in that sense, really, the universe is out of order. What happened should not have happened. It didn't fit what I expected it to be. Well, that's, yeah, that's, that's that story. That's that story, yeah. certainly. So the expectation, unmatched expectation, about how things should be 
is different from how things, how you would like them to be. So we have desires about what we would like. And when we don't get what we want, we're disappointed. And when we get what we want, we're gratified. But that's about us. <laughs> about our desires being fulfilled. It's not really about the other person so much. But when the finger is pointed the other way, about what they could have done, what they should have done, and if they had done that, then I would have. <laughs> and that's... That's the gut wrenching. Right? Pardon me? That's the gut wrenching. That's the gut wrenching. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, it's a struggle. Mm -hmm. So really what we're talking about is giving up the hope of a better past. <laughs> I like what Ramesh said. He said, uh, what should be doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. just, that's so simple. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, it exists in your imagination. Yeah. It exists as an as an idea, possibility. as a possibility yeah. in your own consciousness, which is where the suffering comes from. Yeah. So no, it does not exist in reality. No. <laughs> I also find lately in my life there's a lot of indecisiveness, and I have trouble getting away from that, or not having. I think it's just too much thinking about things. Stop doing it. Stop doing it. <laughs> Cut it out. It may be. Right, it may be. It may be. So far, it hasn't been. So all of that, you know, with thinking or indecisiveness or whatever you want to call it, has certainly happened. Whether it will continue to happen, we'll see. But what we, one of the things we can rest assured about was is that it, its presence, the presence of this indecisiveness or the subsequent absence of it, should it were it to go away, will not be your author doing. I Man wanted to come here last night, but just there was too much stuff going on. Yeah. So the story you tell about not being here last night is that the reason you weren't here last night was because certain thoughts happened in your head. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, yes. Okay. Certain thoughts happened in your head. Question then becomes, where did those thoughts originate from? Well, that's just the play. Yeah. That's the play of life, yeah. So, I mean, thoughts arose. Yeah. If they were in your, within your, if your thoughts were within your power, you'd never have any the crummy thoughts. You'd only have the nice ones. You only have the productive, you know, ones that make you feel power, you know, like you're whatever, you know, whatever ones float your boat. You'd only have those. You would never have the uncertain ones and the second guessing ones and the, the, the you know, well, it could be this, uh, all those, those thoughts that bring you difficult. You'd never have those. So the presence of these things in your life are indicative of some things. They can be a pointer to something very profound about how you are constructed, which gives you the opportunity to look and see if you are the one doing the constructing. If you are, construct better. <laughs> I 
That was a big nugget. I got to think about that for a while. <laughs> I could chew on that. <laughs> it is a big nugget. I mean, it's the, it's the essential nugget, really. Mm -hmm. It's the one we're really pointing at here in this teaching of, of this is getting to the nitty gritty of like what's responsible here. Responsible for your thoughts, your which you indicate lead to your actions. So all of these thoughts happen, and 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 a certain kind of action happens or doesn't happen as a result of this this process. So what we're concerned with is looking continuously back more deeply to what is it responsible for the thoughts. It's not enough just to identify, oh, my thoughts are creating these difficulties. All right, fine. Thoughts are creating the difficulties. But what's creating the thoughts? Where do these thoughts arise from? What is animating this set of thoughts in you that bring about these kinds of behaviors? I don't know where to begin with that. Where you begin is with with the thoughts themselves. Oh, I see the thoughts. I see the okay. process, but I can't get past that. But that's the beginning. <laughs> you want to know where to begin? That's where you begin. What you're saying is you don't know where it's going to go. Fair enough. But that's where you begin. That's the beginning. That's the point that this teaching is saying, okay, we're going to start here. This is where you begin. And the fact that you've been associated with the teaching for five years or 10 years or 20 years or whatever makes no difference. You don't get extra credit. And you start there. And from that point, the teaching directs you to look that the scene that we're talking about can happen at any moment. 